I'm uh, Kirk Hornbluth. I'm from UC Davis. Um, we were the second highest emitter um, <laughs> from that. I'm glad you pulled her off the stage before she was able to say anything else about us. Um, we're the second highest emitter partly because we have the biggest campus and we have a med center. Um, and it's, it's interesting that the med center is not that interesting, interested in trying out new novel technologies and powering the hospital. Does that make sense to people? And that's something that actually we're working with uh, on in my program. Uh, so I started a thing called a, a Zero Net Energy and Climate uh, neutrality, neutrality Education and Research uh, Initiative. I sort of took it literally when the UCOP gave me this money. They said, we want to get to uh, carbon neutrality by, by 2025. I was like, OK. So that's all we got to do, and we can keep the money. And so I work with campus. I was already doing projects. That's the reason that I got the money. I was working with um, facilities very closely to do zero net energy on campus by 20, 2030. So now we had, just had to do it five uh, years sooner than we had already planned. So it's not that hard. Um, and all we have to do to do that is develop a roadmap for climate neutrality, which is the action plan, uh, do a bunch of modeling and figuring out how we're going to get there, right? Techno, economic, social modeling. Okay, that's how we're going to get there. This is the technology. This is the behavior that we have to implement or get people to, to, to pay attention to. Um, and then we could do a bunch of applied projects on campus, and then we'd be home free. It all starts here. This is my little lab um, at UC Davis. Uh, I started a thing called the Program for International Energy Technologies when I got my PhD. Um, they say that if you get your PhD and you don't know what you're going to do, uh, start a program and then appoint yourself the director. <laughs> so I'm the director, it just, just turns out. I'm a director of about four other things. There's so many directors at UC Davis, we can't even find anyone to do the work. Um, anyway, I started this little lab, and, and the reason I show you this, this lab is because really what I'm doing is I'm focusing on these projects, trying to get us to climate neutrality. It's, it's, it's great to see somebody who's been a big supporter here. Um, and the other thing I'm trying to do is educate students in critical thinking, right? And I'm going to talk about wh wh how, what kind of critical thinking I think is important. But it's important for them to have a place to go that they can work and they can hang out and not work on their projects. They just, they're there, they're working on their projects, they're interacting, and they come up with all kinds of different ideas, which is, I think, really important. Um, we are in the, the largest planned zero net energy community in the country, which is West Village. Good and bad things about that. The uh, good thing is it's about 60 to 80 percent zero net. Is that a failure or a success? It's pretty good, right? We're, we're, we're producing almost all the energy on site that we use. Um, it turns out that when you give students free electricity that they use more than they would if they had to pay for it. Okay, so there's some behavioral component there. Um, I teach project-based courses which are not funded by the university. So if you want to do courses that are innovative, that are leading edge, that you can, ch can stop on a dime, that you can change the subject matter anytime you want. It's nice not to have to pay to be part of a department specifically. And if you want to do transdisciplinary work, and I, some other people talked about transdisciplinary classes, sometimes you just have to create them. So I appointed myself the director, and then I created a bunch of project-based courses, which I was paying for, and then I asked students if they wanted to come and take part in them. So that's what I do. And I created about uh, five, well, the, four of these courses. A Path to Zero Net Energy is the course that I'm working with to get the uh, campus to climate neutrality and zero net energy. Um, <clears throat> we just started a new one called Pathways to Climate uh, Neutrality with the physics department. And I teach two other classes here, which focus just on energy and agriculture in the developing world. Um, it's client focused. So we're trying to get the students around this, their head around this idea that these problems are not clean. They don't come to you well defined. So the students submit about two or three weeks just trying to work with the client to figure out what is the problem, right? And then the client has, has one idea about, about what they want to do. They want to replace all their buses with electric buses. And then maybe three weeks later, the, climate, the, the customer actually wants to use alternative fuel vehicles. So how do they educate the client? How does the client educate them to, to put this, this problem in some sort of frame that they can actually work on in 10 weeks? And we're on quarters, so it's only 10 weeks. Um, this is the framework that we work in. I call it the four lenses of sustainability which I coined that phrase, and I have a uh, copyright on it. So if you want to talk about the four lenses of sustainability, you have to talk to me. If you want to look at a project from a technical, economic, um, social, and environmental lens, you have to talk to me. It's the only way you can do it. You, you can do triple bottom line all day if you want. You can do it on your own. You don't have to pay me anything. But if you want to use the four lenses. Um, so we have our students. We, we really want our students to understand that this is what you have to do to be sustainable. You have to talk about the, the cultural, 
the, the cultural context, you have to talk about the technology, but not in a vacuum. You have to talk about the commercialization and the adoption. And then you have to talk about what are the environmental impacts. So if they have two designs that are competing, at least they know what the environmental impact of each one is and what you might do to choose it. So this is kind of what we're trying to do with them. Um, it's international. I don't know if anyone here knows this, but the U.S. is not the only people who are concerned about global warming. <laughs> the U.S. is not the only one who, understand, uh, who are implementing renewable energy. In fact, 10 years ago, I think we didn't even have that in our vocabulary, right? Um, we work with the Danes who have been, uh, some days they produce 150% of electricity in their grid. They're about 40% um, <coughs> renewables in their electricity. We work with them, we work with other partners, and I think it's really important to have this international perspective. My, our students are traveling, they're working both in Euro with European partners and are also working in developing countries. So, um, and that's the other side of it. We know that the, the climate problem is not just in the developed world, right? It's in the developing world. So we work on both of those. This is actually, I took the, the uh, facilities manager from UC Davis to meet the facility manager in Denmark and talk about the way that they're managing their campus. So other new flash, <laughs> all of the good stuff is not on the internet, right? right? All, all of the important data is not available through your laptop. And this is something we're also working with students to understand. Sometimes you have to make a phone call. Sometimes you have to travel. You have to do all kinds of different things. It's just one tool. But there's so many other ways to do it. So we really encourage our students to go out and talk to people. If it's on campus, they're talking to, to um, facility managers, other people like that. If, it's, if we're working at a project in Zambia, they're actually often traveling there. So um, that's really important. Learning by doing is another thing, is I want students to get their hands dirty. I grew up in Detroit. I had my hands in cars when I was about 12 years old. Uh, I like getting my hands dirty. I like creating. Most students do. Ever since they got rid of shop classes in high school, students have lost these skills. So they flock to my classes because they know they're going to learn how to use hand tools, maybe weld, whatever it happens to be. So I think that's an also important thing. It's also another way, another part of your brain uh, to get in touch with for creativity is with your hands. And so we try to encourage that. Um, this is UC Davis's vision for climate, for 100% for renewable. And this is starting in 05 and going to 2025, which is right about the time that we're all shooting for, right? And, the, and the, what I talked about, UC, UC Davis being a good place to work, is that they already have this vision and they're already moving on it. So it's not that hard, you know, I didn't do this, I just inserted myself in a process that was already happening. I, I got students to work on, climate, uh, on, on energy and climate projects and I got to work with the, the offices at UC Davis who were already doing it. I think I was just fortunate that that stuff was already going on and that everyone's willing to do it. So we're actually at Davis, even though we're the biggest one, or second biggest one, I think in about 10 years, you know, you're going to be just above us over there at Merced. <laughs> and just very quickly, some applied projects. This is my favorite project for students. Uh, the facilities came to us and they said, look, we, you know, we, we have this big cooling um, storage where we, at night, we create all our cold water for campus, right? It's an easy way to create cold water. It's an efficient way to do it. They have 5 million gallons. <clears throat> we created this thing. But we don't have a good protocol for when to fill it up or when to not fill it up. If it's a really hot day, should we start filling up a little before the end of the day so we have enough cold water for tomorrow? Or should we wait till tomorrow and fill it up during the day? What's the right protocol? Um, so they came to us with that problem. We gave it to our students. The students looked at, at climate data. They went and talked to the operators. They looked at uh, energy use data for the campus. They did a bunch of analysis. They, they did forecasting. They came up with a protocol for, fi for filling the tank which saved the campus $40,000 first year and a bunch of energy, right? How much did it cost? It didn't cost anything. So that was awesome. The, the, when we interviewed, and this is the, the in, important part about going and talking to people, when they interviewed the plant operators, when they filled the tank, they, they filled it before they left. And they did that because they knew that if the next guy comes and the tank is empty, they get in trouble. Right, because they didn't have any other protocol. So the nice thing was that the, the students figured that out from talking to people. So this is one of my favorite projects because it didn't cost any money. We're doing lots of other projects which I won't talk about right now. Um, one of them is electrifying the buses on campus. So I took it literally when they said 2025, carbon neutrality, I took it literally. I'm trying to educate the students to do that. That's all. <laughs>